Hi, how are you all doing? Today we are going to discuss general mechanism and the, some of the reactions of alpha Kg dependent or alpha ketoglutarate dependent dioxygenases as well as halogenases. In the last class, we have seen the reaction mechanism for these dioxygenases, right? Where we have seen that um, how the enzyme is dependent on alpha ketoglutarate and then how the high valent iron oxo species is generated from this alpha ketoglutarate dependent enzyme. So, this is the alpha ketoglutarate and it is bound with the iron center, then oxygen activation takes place and it attacks on the keto center overall alkyl peroxide type of intermediate and subsequently oxygen oxygen bond cleavage gives rise to the iron 4 oxo intermediate which then can react with organic substrate, right. So, we have seen that organic substrate can be hydroxylated by using this mechanism or by following this mechanism where R dot and OH react with each other to give ROH, right. Now, let us look at little bit more on this, uh, we will see one crystal structure how this sort of intermediate looks like. Let us say one of these we will see how it is it is looking like when alpha ketoglutarate is bound with iron and the organic substrate is also appended right next to or right at the active site. Okay. We will see tau D, this is active site of tau D with bound substrate. So, this is the taurine that is the organic substrate and this is the aliphatic substrate that we want it to get hydroxylated, right. As you can see this is the iron center and two of the histidine and another aspartate is right over there, right. This is called facial triad motif. So, three of these substituents are right next to it. This is the alpha ketoglutarate as you can see it is bound and uh, overall the one coordination is vacant over here where uh, taurine is approaching. Of course, it is not coordinated. Now, the oxygen will activation will take place and the binding will take place at this at this axial site, right. Now, now the as you can see taurine is right next to the iron center. That means, it has the capability to reach out to the high valent iron oxo species that is getting generated right over there. One of the thing you must be noticing that in addition to taurine, um, here is a tyrosine which is not a you know desired substrate to get hydroxylated because its job is to hydroxylate taurine. But when the taurine is not present then what happens we see quite a lot of reaction at tyrosine, we will come back to that later. Let us see that uh, what, what we can do, well this sort of mechanism is quite, quite familiar when the taurine is not there actually tyrosine gets involved into the reaction, right. So, that is quite unusual I would say, but what uh, you can conclude is since the iron oxo species which is getting generated over there, it is so reactive if the organic substrate that needs to be hydroxylated is not positioned perfectly or missing, then tyrosine is going to be the substrate and tyrosine to catechol formation can be done. We will see that in a separate slide and the mechanistic study on this we will we'll discuss. Well, uh, this is also happening if these uh, you know this sort of reaction also happens when you f uh, when you do not have alpha ketoglutarate present. If you have the succinate which is originating from alpha ketoglutarate upon decarboxylation as you have seen in the last slide, uh, the succinate is there and they, then one, one, one can also get different type of mechanism. Okay, Let us look at this mechanism one more time little quickly. So, this is the alpha ketoglutarate and if the organic substrate this one is not there this tyrosine will come into picture. In absence of the R, uh, RH 
um, or in presence of Rh how things are going to be. Let us look quickly look at. So, this superoxo intermediate is generated iron 2 reacts with oxygen let us say this is a leveled oxygen iron 2 uh, superoxo is getting generated then that attaches or attacks on the keto moiety right fantastic that attacks on the keto moiety and you have this uh, you know beautiful ring compound from here on the rearrangement reaction gives rise to this intermediate where you have a iron 4 oxo species generation. Now, this iron 4 oxo species in absence of taurine or the suitable substrate it can abstract hydrogen atom from this tyrosine right tyrosine phenolic OH it becomes tyrosine radical and then hydroxylation can go on we will we'll discuss this again in in few slide. Now, uh, in in, uh, in presence of substrate like uh, this R prime H R prime H if it is sitting right next to it ROH formation will be going on decarboxylation can lead to alpha ketoglutarate to succinate of course, carbon dioxide also will come out and the overall catalytic cycle can be completed by the regeneration of iron 4 to iron 2 right. So, so far so good. Now, let us look at a little bit related, but uh, I mean much related lot different outcome reaction mechanism and the substrate halogenation chemistry right. So, there is a series of enzyme or series of uh, reaction that can happen if you have little bit twist into your active site. What is that? Well, you, we were having 2 histidine and 1 aspartate right previously with the alpha keto glutarate dependent high, uh, high, uh, hydroxylases right oxygenases. I, um, so, we have 2 histidine and 1, 1 aspartate if you remember 2 histidine and 1 aspartate was there. Now, what if this aspartate is removed and placed with another halide. So, this becomes a completely different enzyme now this is called alpha Kg dependent halogenases. So, that means a halogen is sitting over there instead of aspartate and uh, of course, you still need alpha ketoglutarate this is alpha ketoglutarate dependent halogenase right. So, the substrate just like previously for the uh, oxygenation chemistry or, uh, or the uh, or the oxidases uh, you have seen uh, seen previously this uh, oxy dioxygenases you have uh, seen that substrate is coming on to the organic moiety or onto the metal center. So, substrate is oriented similarly over here also the substrate is going to be or oriented or fixed right next to the iron center right. It is the exactly same thing what is happening previously 2 histidine 1 halide you have instead of this aspartate reaction mechanism and things remain similar. We have seen the next step would be after substrate binding next step would be the oxygen activation or dioxygen activation that is what happens first of course, has to undergo binding that is true in every case you will have the bind bound oxygen intermediate iron oxygen bound intermediate this is fantastic to histidine one halide and alpha ketoglutarate then one electron transform from iron 2 to this superoxo occurs the you get the iron 3 superoxo intermediate that attacks on this center not this center this is the carbon dioxide releasing part on this superoxo once it generate it will attack over there as you have seen previously further um, further cleavage will gives rise to the iron 4 oxo intermediate. Now, up to here exactly same actually up to next step is also exactly same as you have seen in the dioxygen age. But over here what you see that of course, iron 4 oxo will abstract hydrogen atom from the aliphatic substrate that is all fantastic and will give RCH2 dot or the substrate radical intermediate and you have the hydroxo intermediate right. If it abstract hydrogen atom you will get RCH2 dot and OH. Now, what happens in the halogenases enzyme 
the halogen is sitting very close and nicely placed with respect to this radical even compared to the hydroxyl. And therefore, quite excitingly for the halogenases you get exclusively exclusively halogenated product formation of course succinate comes out carbon dioxide comes out and then you um, deliver uh, halide to regenerate the catalytic cycle. As you have seen in the earlier case when X is aspartate and that means no halogenation business and hydroxyl is close to that and then it can do the hydroxylation chemistry. Again succinate and carbon dioxide comes out as the byproduct. So, what you have just seen right now by changing just one ligand of course, that is the iron halogen we are talking about iron X just one ligand nature can modify control absolute control I think that is that is what is really amazing that nature can completely control the reactivity everything else is remain same on the the aspartate is replaced by halogen. Now all of a sudden no hydroxylation products are forming, but exclusively exclusively halogenation products are forming. I think that is quite phenomenal and that is why you see it is going to be so difficult to compete or try to mimic what we have in nature. right? these efforts are going to be very tedious and lengthy. Indeed, you would notice that that there are there exist mimics for the alpha ketoglutarate dependent dioxygenases, but there is no mimic so far on the structural plus functional together these halogenases one. Well, that is quite quite amazing how nature really does. Let us look at this one more time little bit. So, what we are saying that from the iron oxo this RH undergoes hydrogen atom abstraction to give you hydroxo and R dot. Now, this R dot is not going to rebound with the hydroxo instead this R dot is going to bind with or react with halogen or halide over here to give sorry hal halide over here to give the hal uh, halogenated product well that is quite phenomenal I, as I would say because this hydroxylation is quite um, quite 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 challenging or in these cases but overall you have seen exclusive halogenation was happening in the other case right now no halogenation only hydroxylation only halogenation is happening. This has to do in two count one this is due to the fact that this radical R dot radical is positioned really perfectly to and very close to the halide over hydroxy. Another thing is the uh, you know that reduction potential for the halogen is suited to transfer over there compared to hydroxyl. Hydroxyl can transfer, but halogen transfer is much more facile. So, that 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 is how nature has designed and decided to take advantage of this system. Right? So, one common intermediate almost throughout the catalytic cycle, one subtle change complete different product distribution, complete exclusive product distribution. So, in one case you have seen the hydroxylation in the first cases and these halogenation enzyme can exclusively give the halogenation product. Now, you can imagine when synthetic chemists are trying to promote some reaction, it is actually always going to be the hydroxylated product that is going to be predominantly forming. Okay? Almost 90 5 percent efforts that has gone in mimicking the halogenase activity actually ends up failing to mimic it, but it just gives the hydroxylation product. Almost in most of the cases no halogenation product whatsoever can be formed. In some cases at best mixture of halogenation and hydroxylation product can be formed so far. Well, there, there, uh, there exist alternate, um, alternate uh, mimic 
which we may not be discussing too much, but there it is possible to promote halogenation reaction by utilizing high valent iron oxo intermediate by taking a completely different route. In any case, let us look at one of the practical example. This is uh, what the organic substrate you see over here and this is in halogenase cytochrome C3 and <coughs> you have a iron for oxo chloro intermediate. Now, in these cases this CH2 and Cl dot transfers and, um, and you see exclusively CH2 Cl product along with the iron to hydroxy product formation. This is quite great. Well, we will not be discussing way too much into detail. These are very, very fascinating enzyme and lot is known, lot of studies has been done on the enzyme. If you are further interested, feel free to study. Now, we will try to see one of the other aspect which we are mentioning earlier and that is in the absence of organic substrate. Uh, for example, that is in tau D, taurine is absent, what happens to the tyrosine? Because tyrosine as you have seen in the crystal structure is appended right close to the active site. Is the tyrosine going to be participating in the reaction in absence of the natural substrate that is a taurine for tau D, right? Well, the answer as we have uh, briefly mentioned, yes, phenol is going to be participating into the reaction, but what happens to phenol? Okay, before that <coughs> let us look at once again the same reaction mechanism that we are discussing. It forms a iron to oxo, uh, iron to oxygen intermediate subsequently with the help of alpha ketoglutarate we do see that this iron 4 oxo intermediate is forming. Well, this iron 4 oxo intermediate can then react with tyrosine if the organic aliphatic substrate that is required to be present is not there, right? Well, so you, you get a phenoxy radical intermediate, tyrosine radical intermediate along with iron 3 hydroxo formation, right? Now, you can imagine if uh, this is the case, now this can go on and form a oxygenation or undergo oxygenation at the ortho position and that is what is exactly happening. This phenoxy radical then undergo oxygenation reaction to give you the catechol intermediate. Well, as you have perhaps noticed if you are using leveled water, let us say wet in level water in these cases when tyrosine is um, is reacting that means the organic substrate is absent, then this water molecule oxygen, so oxygen derived or oxygen of the water molecule can be incorporated in the phenol equivalent or phenol molecule, right. So, this is going to be catechol now and um, you know that is fantastic if you under oxygen it can further get oxidized to iron 3. So, what you have just seen right now in the absence of the natural substrate organic substrate that is supposed to be hydroxylated by alpha keto dependent oxygenase you do not if you do not have such organic substrate you end up getting a completely different reaction and that is the phenoxy radical generation because iron 4 oxo is so reactive it is not going to be sitting ideal just and uh, you know just be sad that it does not have the organic substrate. It is not going to be sit down over there, it is going to react with anything that is available to it. In this case phenol is a easy substrate to react and it ends up reacting and giving us phenoxy radical subsequently the catechol moiety which is all right, right. But I think the most interesting part in this case is if you add weight in leveled water as you have seen weight in leveled water is uh, getting incorporated the weight in level oxygen is getting incorporated in the product. So, what water oxygen atom is incorporated into the product this is a clear cut evidence that something must be going on. And that something is this iron 3 hydroxo and this water can exchange with each other. So, this hydroxo can become water and this water becomes hydroxo and that hydroxo can be incorporated into hair, right. Well, 
that also would mean that this stability of the phenoxy radical is quite high Un unless until this is stable or this has some lifetime you would not be able to see this sort of exchange right. So, the, the reason or the, the moment you know that this exchange is happening then you are certain that the phenoxy radical is long lived enough so that it allows the exchange and then, then the reaction can also happen. Of course, it is not going to be exclusive formation of the O18 level water you still can get O16 water uh, O16 oxygenation here, but the, the fact that the leveling can be found is indicative of the two things as I said. One thing is it is exchanging this hydroxyl and this water molecule are exchanging with each other. Second thing is um, it, it this, this phenoxy radical is long lived right. So, that is what we have written over here. And well, this is the self hydroxylation mechanism, right? So, we, we, we see that self hydroxylation of the enzyme is happening in absence of organic substrate, but this mechanism will vary based on the presence of what you have. If you have alpha ketoglutarate, this is the pathway, but it is not necessarily you have always the alpha ketoglutarate. If you run out of alpha ketoglutarate, you can essentially can have uh, let us say succinate because succinate is the product derived from alpha ketoglutarate and as you have seen alpha ketoglutarate undergoing the reaction overall in these enzymes to give you succinate. So, succinate is going to replace alpha ketoglutarate if it is not present in enough amount right. So, in those cases succinate is definitely not alpha ketoglutarate it will act just as a monodented ligand as you have seen in the last slide alpha ketoglutarate is a bidented ligand right. So, succinate that is getting produced over here is going to be likely the, the, the monodented ligand and uh, of course, it has also an uh, probability of, of bringing these two acid together, but in any case this is almost going to be similar to let us say aspartate type of substrate and uh, sorry aspartate type of ligand in presence of such ligand or in absence of alpha ketoglutarate you end up providing one electron and one proton in the system. So, in the enzyme it, it ends up forming iron 3 hydroperoxo. Now, it is not that something new in this yes iron 3 hydroperoxo species can form essentially what is happening here iron 2 is reducing oxygen to give you iron 3 superoxo one electron transform from iron 2 into oxygen gives you iron 3 plus and oxygen 1 minus that is superoxo iron 3 superoxo is form you give one electron and one proton that superoxo radical then it becomes iron 3 hydroperoxo this is what you are seeing over here right iron 3 hydroperoxo you are getting and this iron 3 hydroperoxo can undergo further cleavage of the oxygen oxygen bond to form to form iron 5 oxo hydroxy species if you break the oxygen oxygen bond and then that radical will give you that iron 5 hydroxo let me let me see if we can um, if you can draw a little bit over here and um, well I, I would need a uh, new page perhaps white screen ok. So, what we are trying to say is uh, essentially if you have iron 2 right and reacting it with oxygen ok. Now, this is going to form iron one electron gives one electron give one electron gives ok. So, you will get iron 3 super oxo radical right that is fine and then you can give a hydrogen atom ok. It could be one proton plus one electron one electron overall a hydrogen atom if you are giving then you are going to get iron 3 hydroperoxo species right. Now, if you have seen if it is breaking oxygen oxygen bond that means it go one electron here one electron there. 
Now iron 3 to form a iron 4 it will it will end up giving one other electron. So, double bond O will be forming right over here and this hydroxo radical if it has to bind with iron, iron will end up giving another electron. So, iron is overall producing 2 electrons or giving 2 electron. So, iron 3 becomes iron 4 and iron 4 becomes iron 5. So, overall you have iron 5 oxo hydroxy right. So, iron 5 oxo hydroxy intermediate is happening and I hope you, you understand how it is happening. Iron 3 gets oxidized once, iron 3 get oxidized another time. So, this iron hydroxy and iron 5 oxy is forming in these cases. So, that is what as you have seen that is what is happening over here um, in, the, in the right hand side. Okay. So, that is where you see in the right hand side in here and uh, iron 5 oxo is fascinating and it is happening right over there and you can you can get get a clear idea from what we have drawn earlier and from there on as you can see this iron 5 oxo hydroxo can also give this um, you know catechol type of intermediate formation okay so the conclusion from this reaction is tyrosine radical is long lived and water ex exchange occurs at iron 3 hydroxo as you, you were mentioning over here okay and iron 4 of course um, iron 4 oxo forms and attacks tyrosine 73 uh, so these are all all we have discussed so far so what we have seen so far then in this class two things i would say first thing is the alpha keto glutarate dependent halogenases which is a great enzyme right you get exclusive halogenation it's not that great aliphatic substrate halogenation it has to be one of those best reaction ever i would say right well if you don't have the halogen you have seen that it could be hydroxylated that's the that's the normal enzyme or most of the things time that's what happens but special enzymes such as alpha kg halogenases it can do halogenate the organic substrate that you have seen and the mechanism you have seen it's nothing different it's almost exactly same as the oxygenases but only varies in one of the ligand which is on the iron center on the other hand the last part what we are discussing today contains what contains yes the doesn't contains the doesn't contain the substrate so it doesn't have the substrate the desired aliphatic substrate and therefore therefore we see that the reactive iron oxo intermediate is not going to seed ideal it is going to react with itself means its own environment and that is where tyrosine 73 which is right next to the active site will come into the picture and it gets hydroxylated right. Tyrosine getting hydroxylated means phenoxy radical, phenoxy radical uh, leading to the catechol moiety. Okay. Now, this mechanism or the you know the intermediates can vary it could undergo a traditional oxo mechanism that we have seen in the oxygenase and halogenases, um, but that is when we have the alpha ketoglutarate present. In absence of alpha ketoglutarate essentially you need to have something and that something is succinate because succinate is getting generated from alpha ketoglutarate in this enzyme. So, when alpha ketoglutarate is running out or we ran out or of alpha ketoglutarate and that is when succinate comes into the picture for the tyrosine in absence of tau D or organic substrate we are going to get once again the same product in terms of tyrosine because tyrosine is the substrate that is going to or tyrosine will act as a substrate and will give you catechol. But more importantly the reaction mechanism is completely different here right as you have seen that that reaction mechanism would require um, a, a iron oxo hydroxy intermediate formation right this iron oxo hydroxy intermediate formation. Okay. And I hope how it is forming you have seen it just practice it a little bit this is very simple and we will we'll come back soon in the next class. Till then keep studying thank you very much for listening we will see you soon.